What's going on guys, TKD1234 with you, and today this is going to be the last time you will probably ever see this room for a while, guys. This is going to be the last video I record here on this channel, in this room, uh, you know, until anything else happens in life but uh this is the last video here in this room so r.i.p to the room r.i.p to uh my makeshift studio and let's get right into the music news as it is tuesday starting off here we have a story here coming in from playboy cardi and he is being accused of stealing beats now who is the accuser this guy named milan mix beats and he is claiming that you know playboy cardi has stolen a bunch of beats from him over the past few years and everything and that he has used instrumentals without him asking for permission and everything and you know from his point of view it's not even that he necessarily wants credit or wants uh you know to be you know just credited for the songs it's not that he wants that what he wants is just he wants to get paid and obviously here there is the side of playboy cardi he says that this is all bs that this is all just made up stories and that you know since he has blown up this past year obviously milan is wanting a lot of the revenue a lot of the money that he's made this past year because he's blown up over his debut mixtape and everything and so that is his side as well where playboy cardi is saying yo like this is trash this is not what's happening and i just realized i'm doing this episode with my glasses hold on hold on we don't want glare in the shot but beside the point carly says that he is working with a guy named pierre born who is his new uh i guess you can say mainline producer that he has right now so that's where he said that he is getting his main beach from right now but we'll see how this whole thing plays out i don't think there's gonna be any lawsuits you know i think this is all just kind of slander back and forth who knows if this blows up i'll let you all know next up here now you know you can't have a good game without a good soundtrack and nba live 18 is gonna need everything it gets because if you are in the gaming industry if you guys are aware of how games work you know a lot of times we all know that nba live tries and tries and tries to be that staple basketball game and with 2k in the mix it just never works it just never works 2k always you know takes that upper mantle and that just is what it is right but nba live is back here with their soundtrack for this year and it is looking good they got 4am with two chains and travis scott they got dna with kendrick lamar they have exo tour live by little uzi for it's arguably song of the year arguably song of the year they got summer 17 by rick ross and they have you know a little bit of new stuff with i'm here with russ so definitely there's a plenty of other you know uh, songs here that are super super great and those are just the highlights that i saw right there so definitely big ups to the nba live soundtrack is looking great next up here a more interesting story here coming out of the new york times and that is that they have done some investigation done some i'm sure some research some algorithmic things going on here and that they have narrowed down the most popular artists by region in the united states and these stats are pretty cool surprisingly enough future and lil uzi wrote are actually the least popular artists you know that they you know garnered some research on uh throughout this whole entire survey so those two were the bottom of the haystack while travis scott and lil liadi definitely dominate the southeastern part of the u.s Nicki minaj and post malone shared similar parts of the uh, u.s which is kind of weird to me because i wouldn't even you know imagine like i don't know like Nicki minaj something having you know errors in the map that post malone has as well very very weird combo there going on to the west coast pop artists such like like Justin Timberlake and Selena Gomez definitely dominate there. While Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Beyonce are kind of scattered around the U.S. everywhere. Kind of, they're all kind of universally liked throughout the U.S. evenly. But kind of the one that's super weird here, that's super really obtuse here, is that Michael Jackson is definitely not a fan for people that are northern parts of the U.S. But if you go parts of the south of the U.S., we have the western side and the eastern, you know, coast and everything. Uh, he is definitely prominent in those southern areas of each coast. So definitely interesting there to see there. Next up here we. Have Charles Gambino and he recently did a BBC interview and uh, in that interview he actually told some very good things about new music that he's working on currently. A little cool thing to add here was that he is actually right now currently living in London which is a thing that I didn't know about I wasn't aware about but he is actually living in London which is super cool and that has been garnering him a lot of inspiration of what he says so definitely cool things will be coming in the new music as well because he says that definitely that London influence is definitely seeping into his creativity and along with that there were plenty of other things discussed in this interview I highly encourage you guys to go read up some transcripts or go listen to it even on BBC next up we have co-host Joe Budden of course on Con complex's everyday struggle uh you know there are plenty of shenanigans plenty of funny clips on twitter and everything but beside that beside all the point joe budden is expecting a child with his girlfriend right now sin santana and definitely congratulations to the couple right there that's a great thing to hear man hopefully the baby is all healthy hope you you know hopefully you, you know you all blessed with a great kid and everything i hope everything turns out well for you both definitely congrats there we got some studio watch this week and this one's good there's only one but this one's this one's really good we have black and timbaland in the studio now listen, 
Black Rich Snake cut his hair, right? I understand that, you know, he's, like, going through some changes right now. Like, he got a lot of, you know, good publicity on that debut tape. A lot of people are liking it, right? But, uh, you know, he cut his hair now. I see some developing in him, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping that this is connected to his new music he's putting out. And I cannot wait for some new Black Let's Do. Because Black was definitely on my radar. Definitely on my list right now for top 10 people that I'm watching right now. Definitely impressed by Black. And I cannot wait for his new music. Next up, we have 2 chains in the news here. Now, 2 chains. he broke his foot around 11 days ago I think it was and he had surgery 10 days ago so the day after he broke he had surgery and everything and when he came out of surgery his doctors were like hey listen man uh, you gotta cancel your tour you obviously cannot perform you have a broken leg you're in a cast you're gonna need a wheelchair all this stuff this is that and the third whatever and uh, he says verbatim on his Instagram you know when the pain meds and everything wore off he called his management and said hey listen I need someone to get me a pink wheelchair now you know he didn't get a pink wheelchair just because you know he likes the color pink no he did it to match his tour set and he is going on tour in a wheelchair he is continuing pushing forward he actually made a stop his first stop you know like i believe was in tucson arizona right right near where i live and everything so like, he uh debuted the pink wheelchair there in tucson and i uh, got a great uh you know reception there a lot of people enjoyed it and everything but um, it really does show you man like the the true adversity that this man is going through right now to have a broken leg and so going to sewer i remember when drake like sprinkled his ankle and he like delayed three shows or something like that like for, it's just you know just to hear drake you know sprained an ankle and you know like push two or three shows we have two chains here going like yeah i broke my leg but i'm so you know i'm literally going out to he's literally on stage in a wheelchair like two chains man reps up dog great album great adversity man I got nothing else to say, dog. Back onto the epic that is the SoundCloud dilemma now. Uh, it looks like SoundCloud here has been saved. So basically what's happened in the past few weeks, trying to just, you know, just to sum up everything, right? We talked about here in the channel that Chance Rapper came in and basically saved SoundCloud. But that, you know, was a little bit of a band-aid. Not uh, a full heel, but that was definitely a band-aid to the uh, whole, you know, ordeal here. And that what it came down to here the past few days was that old investors were going to vote on allowing new investors to invest in soundcloud right but the issue is of course there was some issues with you know investing you know going crisscross whatever it is right but the whole thing was that the old investors basically had a yes or no vote and if they voted no and if enough of them voted no soundcloud was going down like it was done it's over right so thankfully thankfully they voted yes and we have some new investors in the soundcloud and look at soundcloud will survive this whole dilemma and the new investors are the rain group and temasek i believe is how you pronounce it i'm not sure about but that's pretty much close to what I can get. Also in this, the SoundCloud CEO stepped down and everything, and now they have a new one here named Carrie Trainer, who was the former CEO of Vimeo. So I hope good things happen to SoundCloud. I hope they stay afloat. The music industry, I feel, definitely needs SoundCloud for a lot of different reasons, and mainly, you know, the prominent one is that it breeds and it really does give a platform for new and upcoming artists. So I do feel like it's very important for SoundCloud to sustain itself, and I really do appreciate, you know, that we have SoundCloud still here in the day. SoundCloud cloud is saved thank god and the last story here i want to end off here on a kind of a funny you know but good note here is that there is a petition right now on change.org of course change.org you can submit a petition if it gets enough signatures it gets sent directly to the president of the united states and they will have to comment on it publicly right so this petition is seriously asking that the national anthem the star spangled banner the one that's performed in front of every single you know sporting event pretty much uh that star spangled banner is going to be remade if this petition goes through because this petition is asking for this song to be remade and Quavo to redo the song and let Quavo's version be the official United States national anthem and I'm I, I thought it was just you know what I'm gonna propose later here in the video but this is literally what they're proposing here they they say that you know they want to modernize national anthem it's a little bit whack it's a little bit dated they want to kind of reinvent the national anthem here and literally have Quavo perform it I say forget that nonsense. I don't want to remake the Star Jungle Banner. You know what I'm saying? It's a classic. Let it be its own thing. It's beautiful. There's rooted heritage in there. You know what I'm saying? I definitely do appreciate National Anthem. I think we should keep it as it is, right? But, but my point here, my plan here, right? 
Forget just Quavo. Why Why is everyone focused on Quavo? Forget Quavo. Let's bring all the Migos. Let's bring the Trinity together, bro. Let's get all the bros. Let's get all of the Migos. Let's get them all together. Let's make a new petition. Let's petition for them to perform at the Super Bowl 2018 National Anthem, boys. Do you know how epic it would be if we had the Migos performing live the National Anthem ahead of the Super Bowl? Do you know how crazy that would be, boys? That would be absolutely man there is nothing better I'll be, there is nothing better man i've said in the past oh yeah i want drake to do it forget it i don't want drake to do it i don't want the weekend to do it i don't want frank ocean to do it i don't want no one else to do it except i want the migos for 2018 let's get the hashtag going boys let's make it happen we got a few months out the football season isn't even started yet but before it gets started let's start petitioning right now to get the Migos on that field on the Super Bowl night performing the National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for this video. If you all enjoyed, make sure to leave a, leave a like, subscribe, and share down below. I appreciate you guys giving me. Thanks for watching, and as always, I got you.